People have been talking about a possible World War III for decades. During the Cold War between Russia and the US, World War III was on the brink of becoming a reality. Fast forward 60 years to now, and we're back on the brink of a possible third world war. Except this time, advanced nuclear technology means we're in a whole different playing field. Today we're looking at how the threat of nuclear World War III is impacting the car industry right now. We'll look at how much the car manufacturer makes when a consumer buys a car, and the first jobs car companies will cut if we do end the nuclear war. I'll also tell you which car companies are at risk of going bankrupt in the next two years. Stay tuned because the list might surprise you. The global pandemic changed the car industry. Factories, showrooms, and dealerships shut down in an instant. U.S. car sales plummeted 40% in a month. In Chicago, L.A., and Atlanta, traffic went down 70%, and many people liked it. Now we survived the pandemic, and everyone's trying to return back to normal. When car factories reopened their doors, they were met with shortages of key parts and labor, and consumers were met with disappearing cars. In 2021, there were about a million less vehicles than normal on dealer lots, and we're still seeing parts and car shortages today. At the same time, demand for consumer electronics shot up, and so did demand for semiconductor chips. That's one of the reasons why the car industry has been suffering from a shortage of semiconductor chips. This year in 2022, car prices have been at record-breaking all-time highs because of high demand and global shortage of computer chips. With car prices as high as they are now, how much profit are car makers making from them anyway? Most consumers think that car manufacturers get between 10 to 20 percent on every new car they make. The truth is, it really depends on the manufacturer manufacturer and the model. The top premium brands make around 20% in profit. Porsche is considered by most analysts to be the car maker with the top profit margin. Porsche makes a profit around 20% or more on a model's retail price, but other brands make about 10% or lower. Now, that's not necessarily a bad profit margin. In fact, in 2020, the average profit margin for car manufacturers was only 5%, and that's after spending billions of dollars on research, development, infrastructure, and other expenses. How expensive is it to produce a car anyway? Well, every car maker has two types of costs, fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs are mandatory costs that stay the same regardless of the number of cars manufactured. This includes things like the cost of maintaining a facility, finding suppliers, building and testing prototypes, training workers, and adding new tools and technology. Research and development is another important fixed cost. Every time a car maker decides to make a new model, they need to do research and development and thorough testing. In some cases, research and development can take years to complete. Research and development makes around 6% of the total production costs. In 2020, Volkswagen allocated $16.5 billion for research and development. That came out to around 7.6% of their revenue. But it's Tesla that actually spends more in research and development per car and than any other automaker by a long shot per car. Tesla spends a total of $2,984 on research and development. That comes out to three times the industry average of about a thousand bucks a car. That figure is also higher than the collective research and development budgets of GM, Ford, and Chrysler. Tesla also spends the least in advertising per car sold. And then there are variable costs. Variable costs change depending on the volume of cars produced. Raw materials, labor, and distribution are all variable costs. So if a car maker decides to produce more cars, they'll need to hire more workers and so labor costs go up. Skyrocketing oil and new raw material costs due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine is another example of the volatility of variable costs. Raw materials make up about 47% of the manufacturing cost. Steel alone can be almost 22% of a company's operational costs. Direct labor can make up about 21% of the total cost of making a car. Labor costs are usually per hour. In general, it takes about 17 to 18 hours to assemble parts of a car. And for smaller cars, the assembling process can take 11 to 12 hours. The average Ford car today sells for around $22,000. In 2017, Ford's profit margin was just around 5% before taxes. So if Ford were to sell a $22,000 vehicle, they'd make a profit of around $1,100 and a gross margin of $2,200, which in retrospect isn't as high as you may have thought initially. So let's put it all together. If there's a nuclear war, which of these expenses would car makers cut first? Since Tesla is already spending the least in advertising costs and they are at the top of the EV game, you can see that advertising costs is less of an imperative to them. If there's a nuclear war, we'll be seeing far less car ads. So if you're a car company with facilities in the country that faces war or nuclear threat, well obviously you'll consider relocating your operation to a safer, less politically volatile country. That's why Daimler, Truck, Ferrari, Ford, Mercedes-Benz, Stellantis, Toyota, Volkswagen, and Volvo has even 
are pulled out of Russia or limited their exports to Russia. Another cost that can be cut is human resources and labor costs in the event of nuclear war. It's not unheard of to see massive layoffs. And if the Russian oil sanctions have taught us anything, it's that a car company may not even have a choice on which expenses to cut. For example, say the country supplying the raw materials you need for your car is suddenly no longer an option. Even though you have the funds to buy more materials, now you've lost your supplier, so you have to find an alternative source. In the meantime, you have to figure out how to prioritize the materials you have left. Here's a question. Is it possible for a major car company to go completely bankrupt? Believe it or not, yes. It's easier to go bankrupt than you might think. Take Aston Martin, for example. Since 1913, they've gone bankrupt seven times. It first went bankrupt all the way back in 1924 when it was owned by Lionel Martin. A few bankruptcies later, the company was bought by David Brown. By 1972, David Brown was actually able to pay off all of Aston Martin's debts. But only two years later, in 1974, the company was back in bankruptcy. By the way, Lamborghini. It's been sold five times since 1963. After going bankrupt in 1978, the ownership of Lamborghini bounced around from company to company. Finally, the company was taken over by Volkswagen in 1998. Volkswagen then just placed Lamborghini under the control of the Audi Group, which gave the brand name a boost in sales they needed. Since then, Lamborghini's vehicle sales only noticeably dropped for a short time after the 2008 financial crisis. Even a singular car model itself can be enough to bankrupt the company. A case in point is the DeLorean DMC-12. It was at the height of popularity after it was featured in the cult classic movie Back to the Future. Former GM executive and engineer John DeLorean established the company back in 1975 with an investment sum of over 200 million bucks. Yet despite all that dough, DeLorean declared bankruptcy due to low demand and legal issues when its owner John DeLorean was arrested in 1982. Or take, for example, the Hummer H2. It was instantly a bestseller. At its peak, over 70,000 units were sold. Celebrities like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Eminem, and LeBron James were just some of the famous names who got a Hummer H2 of their own. But then GM Hummer's parent brand went bankrupt thanks to the 07 recession, emissions concerns, and a few bad financial decisions. By 2009, GM had completely shut down all production of the Hummer the next year. Did you know that back in March 2021, Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla and Ford are the only American companies that have not gone bankrupt out of thousands of car startups? He added that prototypes are easy to create, but production is hard, and being cash flow positive is excruciating. So, which car company will be the next on the bankruptcy radar? Car analysts say that Tesla has a less than 1% probability of bankruptcy in the next two years, but Volkswagen has a 73% chance of financial distress. And if Volkswagen doesn't experience financial troubles, then Daimler and Ford are the next expected companies with a 49% probability of financial distress. We can actually learn a few things by looking at the Vietnam War. In 1965, the U.S. officially entered the war after North Vietnam's attack on a U.S. military ship. U.S. involvement ended in 1973, and the war officially ended two years later in 1975. But the Vietnam War had a bigger impact on the U.S. economy as a whole than you might know. Factories that were producing consumer goods started to produce items and weapons for the military. And all that money was going overseas for the military that helped lower the value of the U.S. dollar. Since no corresponding money was being sent back, the U.S. economy faced a real strain. And of course, inflation only increased due to increased domestic social spending and budget deficits. Did you know that during the war, Vietnam was the most heavily bombed country in history? Over 6.1 million tons of bombs were dropped. In comparison, some 2.1 million tons of bombs were dropped in World War II. Along with millions of deaths, the Vietnam War also caused a world of trouble for the car industry. For example, after 114 years in the industry, U.S. automaker Studebaker went bankrupt and closed their doors in March 1966. But the Hummer is a different story. The car actually traces its roots back to just after the Vietnam War. After the war, the U.S. military ditched the Jeep as their go-to vehicle. Jeeps no longer had the power the military wanted, and they also had no armor. So in the 1980s, the U.S. military started looking for a more heavy-duty option. Pentagon gave AM General a billion-dollar contract to develop the fleet of high-mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicles to transfer troops and cargo. These were eventually known as Humvees. Did you know that while filming the movie Kindergarten Cop in Oregon, Arnold Schwarzenegger saw Humvees driving by and decided it was his new dream car? He later said in 91 that the Humvee reminded him of the tanks he drove when he was serving in the Austrian Army. The actor ended up becoming the first civilian to own a specifically made Humvee. AM General even went so far as stenciling him the word Terminator on his Humvee. A year later, in 1992, a civilian version of the Humvee hit the market. It was renamed as the Hummer, and if you wanted to get your hands on one, you were looking at a price tag of up to a hundred grand. 
So anyway, what if a nuclear World War III happened tomorrow? Well, just the threat of a possible nuclear war was enough to get Elon Musk to initially drop his plan to buy Twitter. At least that's what his text messages say. Musk signed an agreement back in April to buy Twitter and make the company private. But then seeming out of nowhere, Musk backed out of the $44 billion agreement. In July, Musk told Twitter that he was officially backing up because he had wrongfully withheld data on bots and spam accounts. And then Twitter sued him for backing out. Later, during the hearings in September, text messages from the tech billionaire came to light that seemed to explain the real reason why he decided not to buy Twitter. In a text to one of his Morgan Stanley lenders on May 8th, Musk said it wouldn't make sense to buy Twitter if we're all heading to World War III. Instead, he said they should slow down a few days because Putin was set to do a public speech the following day. Sure enough, on May 9th, Putin gave the speech on the 77th anniversary of the Allied victory over Nazi Germany. And in the speech, Putin said that Russia's decision to invade Ukraine back in February was the only right decision decision and that the West was preparing for an invasion of Russia. Of course, Musk's lawyer later said that the text was taken out of context. But say Musk really did back out of the Twitter agreement because of the threat of World War III. What's to stop other major companies from doing the same in their current deals? Could the threat of this nuclear war put any major deals or company acquisitions on hold for the time being? And could it also make car companies slow down their plans for their future vehicles and expansion? No one knows for sure, but it is a possibility. If this war does begin, countless millions of people will die, and the Earth will take Take decades or maybe even centuries to recover. Once nuclear weapons get involved, the devastating global impacts would mean that no one would really win the war. If World War III does happen, the entire world would never be the same. But now, you tell me, do you think the current world events will lead to a nuclear World War III? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.